Hello everybody. Today I am going to present a tutorial on the human eye or vision. What is the learning objective? As I have mentioned here, that we are going to go through this all these points, properties of the light, then what is the basics of optics, structure of the eye, errors of refraction, color vision, functions of rods and cones. Then that is the some of the abnormalities which are related with color vision and the color blindness and electro retinograph. Now let us understand that is what is the external anatomy of the eye or what we can say eyeball. Now eye as you can see it is situated in the cavity of the cranium or what we call it is the say that is the orbit that is the orbit of that is the cranium. Now what you can observe here is that as usual you first distinct feature we know or observe is say that is the eyelashes or the eyebrow and the eye proper. Now when you look at the eye what you observe that we see prominently that is this transparent part and the aperture and it is surrounded by its whitish portion and further it is say enclosed by say upper eyelid and the lower eyelid. Now coming to say this white of the eye it is called as a say external layer of the eye that we call it as a sclera. It is say that is say it is a not continuous throughout the eye at the anterior portion where we can see here say it is having a transparent part and it is called as cornea and there is the aperture which is formed by the structure which is surrounding uh, say that is a lens what we call the iris and this aperture is called as a pupil. Apart from that say this eye legs this both eyelids are say all the time open and they blink we know and this gap between the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid is called as a palpable fish. Now you can see here what is say that is the, the sagittal section of eyeball. Now remember here that what you have observed that is as usual the it is made up of three layers that we will see later on. The first is the sclera followed by choroid or it is the vascular layer. It is also many of the times called as the uveal layer and innermost lower layer that is what we call it as that is the say retina. Apart from that just remember this part of the eye where there is the exit or the entrance point of the nerve that we call it the posterior portion and this is say the tip of the cornea we call it as a it has a anterior portion or the anterior pole means the posterior pole and anterior pole. So later on you can see here that is eye is divided into say two distinct cavities. In the sum of the say that in literature you will find that say it is called as that is the posterior segment and that is the anterior segment. Now you can see what is the distinct part which is present behind this cornea what we call it as a say that is the lens of the eye surrounded by that is the extension of the choroid layer what you call it as a iris and the as aperture as I told you it is called as that is the pupil. Similarly remember that you come across the two different terms that is the anterior chamber and that is the posterior chamber of the eye. Now the portion behind that is the say that is the anterior surface of that is behind the anterior surface of the cornea and that is between the say pupil is called as the anterior chamber. And the pore, I mean this is the part of say that is the anterior segment and the posterior segment that is what we call it as here say it is present from the say the back of the say that is the le optical lens till the posterior say that is the pole is called as that is the posterior segment. Remember that this anterior segment with its two chambers that is the anterior chamber and the posterior chamber is filled here with a fluid a transparent fluid that we call as the aqueous humor and the posterior segment contains here vitreous humor. Now just to elaborate here just look at this figure what you will find that 
that is the anterior chamber as it is shown here and it contains the two part anterior chamber and the posterior chamber and this is the lens proper and behind this lens we call it as that is the posterior cavity now this anterior chamber here is filled with aqueous humor and the posterior cavity it is here filled with that is the vitreous humor now as as it is shown here in this figure say you can see here that is three layers of say that is the eyeball that is what it is surrounded by the external layer what we call it as say sclera okay and it is said transparent at the front part of the anterior pole of the eye and it is called as cornea then it is followed by that is what we call it as that is the say choroid choroid layer and innermost layer is what we call it as that is the retina one important thing is that here say regarding the choroid layer it forms a very important structure or you may say triangular portion which it forms it's called as that is the ciliary body ciliary body it consists of that is the ciliary say that is the muscles and the ciliary process now other part of say this ciliary body it is attached to its further extension what forms here is what we call it as a iris and this iris is present at the both ends of the cell lens and it forms the gap between the between this iris or that we call it as that is the pupil now coming to the what is actually anatomy of the eyeball adult human eye is hollow spherical structure with 25 diameter situated in the orbital cavity it is having two parts what we call it as that is the optical division and the neural division what do you mean by optical division here say with the say corneal surface lens and that is the other layers of the eye say it helps to form here say image on the retinal surface the second part is the neural division that is it helps here for the perception or say that is the recognition of the image of the object which is formed on the retina now one sixth of the eyeball is visible from the outside as we know that eyeball has three layers as outer fibrous layer that we call it as a sclera the middle vascular layer it is called as a choroid and inner nervous layer what we call it as a retina now the outer layer is also called as tunica fibrosa oculi it is tough fibrous opaque coat made up of dense connective tissue and is white in color it provides shape to the eyeball and is protective function with few blood vessels it consists of two parts anterior part which is transparent as i already told you it is called cornea and posterior part surrounding the eyeball is what we call as sclera cornea is transparent and has no blood supply now coming to the ciliary body now say the second layer which is followed after sclera is choroid layer extending extending from the anterior border of the choroid as i told you this is the what the structure which is shown here with the say yellow arrow is called as the ciliary body this triangular shaped structure between the choroid and the iris forms a complete ring around the eyeball there are two components of the ciliary body the ciliary muscle proper and the ciliary processes the ciliary muscle consists of smooth muscle fibers arranged longitudinally circularly and radially they are controlled by parasympathetic say fibers traveling to the orbit in the say oculomotor nerve that is the third cranial nerve these muscle fibers on contraction decrease the size of the ring formed by the ciliary body now as you can see here that is it shows in this figure it shows here say that is the choroid say uh, the choroid say that is the layer and it forms that is the what we call a ciliary body it is having say that is ciliary muscle ciliary process and it forms a ring around that is the say that is the lens and hence here that is you see this is the anterior compartment and say it shows the for the posterior compartment remember here 
the ciliary body it forms here ciliary ring and it forms here say ciliary processes and one important thing is that from say that is ciliary processes say it is attached to the say that is the poles of the lens opposite poles of the lens by suspensory suspensory ligaments or what we call it as that is say zonules one important thing that is the iris contents here that is the smooth muscle they help here help to constrict the say the pupil or its diameter and this say those muscles which here help to cause contraction they are called as that is the sphincter papillae and those muscles here which help here to cause here say dilation of this say that is pupil is called as a dilator pupil middle membrane contains a large number of blood vessels and hence I mean that is choroid hence called as tunica vasculosa bulbi it is bluish in color hence it is also called as that is uvula lab what is its function it say nourishes the structure in the eyeball it is thin over the posterior two third of the eyeball and is called choroid that is the posterior part along with the its anterior part that we have just seen it forms here say iris and middle part that is thick portion or it is called as a ciliary body the ciliary body is attached to the suspensory ligament or what we call it the zonus the other end of this ligament is joined to the capsule enclosing the say crystalline lens the ciliary body continues forward forward to form the iris it contains two types of the smooth muscle fibers as circular and longitudinal attached to the corneo sacral junction these muscles play important role during accommodation for that is the near vision now coming to the the layers of the say that is the choroid choroid layer the choroid choroid layer is we know is the middle layer of the eyeball the choroid layer contains melanin a dark pigment which functions to absorb light and prevent glare it also contains blood vessels that nourish the posterior area of the eye the choroid layer also forms more specialized structures including the ciliary body and the iris conditions that can afflict an iridia ciliary body melanoma and trauma the coming to the iris it is a pigmented and opaque structure which gives color to the eye and hence many of the time due to color of the iris we find the individuals with the blue eyes that is brown eyes that is black eyes in the center of the pupil it has it has an a smaller aperture called as pupil through which light enter the interior of the eye iris contains two types of the smooth muscles sphincter papillae that is the arranged circular pattern sorry and then they are called as circular muscle fibers and dilator papillae which are arranged in the radial muscle uh, fiber pattern these muscle determine size of the pupil it divides the space between the posterior surface of the cornea and the anterior surface of the lens into the say anterior and the posterior chambers the space enclosed behind the cornea that is and in front of the iris is called as anterior chamber and the space in front of the lens and the behind the iris is called as posterior chamber of the eye both chambers are filled with the aqueous humor I mean that is the anterior chamber and that is the posterior chamber now as you can see here these are the muscles which are say that is shown here these muscles are called as intrinsic eye muscle and they respond to the say that is the light intensity now you can see that it is a normal pattern of that is the iris where you can see here the circular muscles and these are the radial smooth muscles suppose that there is a bright light now the circular muscles will say contract and they will say cause reduction in the size of the pupil when there is a dim light what you will find it? say 
further you will find this radial muscles will say contract and will cause that is the increase in the diameter size of the pupil. What are the functions of the iris? <coughs> Sorry. It regulates the intensity of light entering the eye either by constriction or dilatation of the pupil. In addition, the pigmented layer of the iris absorbs the extra amount of light. It prevents the entry of light from the periphery of the lens. Thus, it prevents spherical and chromatic aberrations. It helps here to increase the depth of the focus by constriction of the pupil. Now coming to the innermost layer of the eyeball, that what we call it the retina. It has complex microscopic structure and which pursue optic stimuli. Retina is an outer pigmented layer of the epithelial cells which is firmly attached to the whole of the inner surface of the eye. It have say inner layer of the nerve cells and nerve fibers which contain the photoreceptors which are very commonly known as rods and the cones. The posterior part of this membrane is called as fundus oculi. I mean you will find that two say small areas what we call as a macula lueta and optic disc or optic papillae are distinguished in fundus oculi. Now what is this fundus oculi? It is the concave interior of the eye consisting of the retina, the choroid, the sclera, the optic disc and blood vessel seen by means of the ophthalmoscope as you can see in there figure. Say that is the what we observe is the fundus. Now the fundus of the eye is the interior surface of the eye opposite to the lens and includes the retina, optic disc and that is the macula fovea and posterior pole. The fundus can be examined by ophthalmoscopy or by fundus photography. Now as we see here see that is say very commonly as it is shown here that uh, that is the optic disc and that is the macula lid. Now one important thing you can observe here say in this figure that that we call it as that is the C that is the optic now and the optic is originating from this point and this is the point what we call it as a optic disc and in front of this you can see this part is called the fovea it is the highest point of that is the visual acuity. Now coming to the crystalline lens it is a circular biconvex transparent body enclosed within a capsule it lies immediately behind the pupil and is held in position with the help of suspensory ligaments or what we call it as a zonal. The other end of the lens is attached to the ciliary bodies. It helps in the formation of image on the retina by altering the curvature of its anterior surface. The central core of the lens possesses a higher refractive index than the remainder part of that is the lens. The very important thing is that the lens has no blood supply. However, low metabolic activities are maintained by substances. Say substances the say to from the aqueous tumor. Glucose is taken by the lens substance, which is metabolized anaerobically to lactic acid by the process of glycosis, which is diffused into aqueous tumor. All nerve fibers of say that is from retina converge to form the optic nerve which finally reach to the brain. The small area of retina where optic nerve leaves the eye is called as the optic disc which lies medial to slightly above the posterior pole of the eye. This spot is called as blind spot since it contains no light sensitive receptors. At posterior pole of the eye, there is yellowish pigment spot called the macula lutea or a yellow spot which marks the location of fovea centralis. The fovea is 1.5 mm in diameter, situated 3 mm temporarily to the optic disc 
At the posterior pole of the eye, there is a yellowish pigment spot called the macula lutea or yellow spot which marks the location of fovea centralis. The fovea is 1.5 mm in diameter situated 3 mm temporal to the optic disc. It is densely packed with the cones and very few cells and, and do not have blood vessels overlying the receptor. It is the point of highest visual acuity and is highly developed in humans. <coughs> now let us say compare here that is the aqueous humor and the vitreous humor. Now remember here that aqueous humor is present at that is the anterior segment of the eyeball and the vitreous humor is present in the posterior segment or the posterior cavity of the eyeball. Now aqueous humor it is found in anterior and the posterior chambers of the eye. It is a thin watery fluid with a pH of 7.1 to 7.3 with specific gravity between 1002 to 1004. It is secreted by ciliary processes at an average rate of 2 to 2.5 microliters per minute. It is absorbed by the blood. It contains most diffusible substances of the plasma. Its obstruction may damage retina if it does not flow and cause glaucoma. What is its composition? It contains low protein ultrafiltrate and is formed by diffusion from capillaries and by active transport of the components from the plasma. High content of vitamin C which helps here in say that is the glucose metabolism. Sodium chloride concentration is high, in aqueous swimmer is high due to the active transport of the sodium ions from the plasma and followed by passive transport of chloride ions which results in passive transport of water due to osmosis. It is having say low concentration of glucose with high lactic acid content because glucose is utilized anaerobically by a vascular cornea and lens. High amounts of hyaluronic acid which is kept in the fluid state by hyaluronidase present in the ciliary body which is an enzyme. Hence, viscosity of the aqueous humor is low. How it is circulated? We will see it in short. Aqueous humor once formed from the ciliary body processes transported from the posterior chamber via papil into the anterior chamber. Later, it passes across the corneal endothelium at the limbus that is the what we call it as commonly corneosacral junction into intrasacral venous plexus which finally drains the fluid into the anterior ciliary vents. Normal anterior chamber pressure is in the range of 13 to 18 mm of mercury while in the venous plexus it is about 10 to 15 mm of mercury which cause continuous drainage of aqueous humor into the venous plexus. There are present say lipid soluble substances such as chloramphenicol and sulfonamides which can enter the aqueous humor while protein for example insulin cannot enter which shows say presence of barrier between blood and the aqueous humor we call it commonly as blood aqueous say humor barrier. Volume of aqueous humor is continuously replaced by the ciliary body it is very important property Aqueous humor is all the time is say regenerated. Hence, it is said here volume of aqueous humor is say continuously replaced by ciliary. What is functions? It provides nutrition to all vascular structures of the eye, for example, cornea and lens. Maintains constant intraocular pressure, which helps in normal image formation. Coming to the vitreous humor, as I already told you, it is present in the posterior segment or the posterior cavity of the eye. Now, it is present in the posterior chamber of the eye. Its nature is, it is jelly-like material. It is secreted by retina during development of the eye. It is very important characteristics, which is as compared to the aqueous humor, is that it is never absorbed or never replaced. Now, what does it mean? The volume remains constant throughout the life. It contains 90% of the water, protein albumin, 
mucopolysaccharide called hyaluronic acid which maintains high viscosity of vitreous. It does not cause glaucoma functions. It maintains the shape of the eyeball. It maintains intraocular pressure which helps in normal focusing of the image on the retina. Now coming to the retina, it is very interesting to note that retina is very important aspect of the eyeball where actual image is formed. Now there are say approximately the 10 layers of the retina and it also contains the very commonest types of the photoreceptors that say help here in the image perception or image formation what we call them as the rods and the cones. Retina contains approximately here 10 layers except in the optic disc and fovea centers. Photoreceptors are placed outermost toward the cori. The layers of retina say from outwards to inwards are now just we will go first uh, uh, to that is the figure say it shows the retinal surface now coming to the say this is the what we say is that is the choroid layer and this shows here first layer which is what we call it as a pigment pigment epithelium then it is followed by these two types of the say photoreceptors then that is the there is the outer limiting layer then it is followed by outer nuclear layer then outer plexiform layer then six inner say nuclear layer 7 C that is the plexiform layer, 8 is the ganglionic cell layer, 9 is the nerve fiber layer and 10 is the that is the inner limiting layer. Remember that this portion shows here that is the, the photoreceptor rods and the cone. You can note here rods are slender in the say shape and the cones are say somewhat conical in the shape. Apart from that there are some of the cells what we call it as a bipolar cells which say here say perform, establishes contact between that is what we call it is a ganglionic cell layer and that is with the photoreceptor. Apart from that you can see here there are say some supporting cells what we call the Muller cells or these are the supporting glial cells. Then there are present say that is the say other cells that is what we call it as a amacrine cells at the top portion and there are the others, uh, other type of the cell, what we call as a horizontal cell. This gives us, say, idea about that is the 10 layers of that is the retina. Now, the first layer, as shown in the figure, it is a pigmented epithelial layer. It contains melanin pigment, now which along with the pigmented chloride absorb extra amount of light, thus preventing the back, backward reflection of the rays through the retina backward reflection of the light would result in blurring of vision. It also has phagocytic function. Now as shown in the figure, say the second layer that is what we call a layer of rods and the cones layer. This is the actual say photoreceptor layer. Each rod and the cone is divided into the some of the parts what we call it as the outer segment, inner segment and a synaptic zone that we will discuss later. The outer and the inner segments form the layers of the rod and that is the cones. And in this figure, remember, it shows the so 10 layers and the direction of the light. I mean, what is the direction of the light, say, coming from that is the, say, the outer corneal surface and reaching to the, say, pigmented epithelial layer and later on, it say, that is the image, say, perception of the image is, say, received that is by the optic now. Then coming to, to other figure, it is a simplified figure of the retinal surface. It shows here that is the pigmented epithelium. It shows here photoreceptors. These are say the slender structures or rods and the conical structure which is shown in the violet color. These are the cones. Then it shows the bipolar cells. Other types of the cells are not shown. And it shows here that is the ganglionic cells that is which form here optic nerve fiber and it shows the direction of light. Then that is it shows here the two structure what we call it the cones and that is the rods. Now we will see this in detail later. Coming to the 
say that is the outer segment just go back to the say this figure now it shows here say that is layer that you call as the outer segment of say this photoreceptor inner segment and that is the synaptic zone which form say that is the synapse with the bipolar show bipolar cells in the figure which i have shown now coming to the say the outer segment of the this photoreceptor these are modified cilia and contain regularly arranged piles of flattened disc or what we call it as saccules composed of membrane in cones the saccules are formed by infolding of the cell membrane but in rods these saccules or discs are separated from the cell membrane the discs or saccules contain the actual photosensitive pigment for example in rods say it contains rhodopsin and in the cone it is called as the adopsin the rods are extremely sensitive to light and receptors for dim light vision that we call it the scotopic vision while the cones are responsible for bright light what we call as the photopic vision and they have a high visual acuity and they are responsible for color vision the rods are named for thin and rod like structure appearance of their outer segment its outer segments are being constantly renewed by formation of new discs at the inner edge of the segment and phagocytes is of the old discs from the outer say tip by the cells of that is the pigmented epithelium in the cones generally have conical outer segment and its renewal is more diffuse process and appears to occur at the multiple sites in the outer segment now coming to the say inner segment of this photoreceptor now this is the actual portion where say what you will find that it is rich in say mitochondria cone say cone inner segment is thick and oval in shape which you have seen and is larger now coming to say the external limiting membrane or outer limiting membrane is one of the 10 distinct layers of the retina of the eye it has a network like structure and is situated at the bases of the rod and cone it separates outer segment and nucleus of the rod and cones along with the synaptic zone coming to the third layer that is external limiting membrane which i just have mentioned is formed by glial tissue which is say in the continuation of the interior limiting membrane and is pierced by the rods and cones now coming to the layer number 3 what we call as the external limiting membrane is formed by glial tissue which is the continuation of the internal limiting membrane and is pierced by the rods and that is the cones it is followed by layer 4 it is say the nothing but outer nuclear layer is formed by the nucleus of rods and cones then it is followed by layer 5 that is what we call it as a outer synaptic layer is formed by the synapses between the ends of the rods and cones with the dendrites of bipolar cells and as shown in the figure horizontal cell processes then comes here layer 6 what we call it as actual inner nuclear layer which contains here the cells which i have shown here that is the bipolar cells then which forms here synapse between the ganglionic cell and that is the photoreceptors proper horizontal cells which connect one receptor cell to the other receptor cell and other type of the cell amacrine cell it is its processes make synaptic contact with the dendrites of both ganglion and the bipolar cells and connect ganglion cells to one another the layer 7 is the inner synaptic layer the synapse between the axons of bipolar cells with the dendrites of the ganglionic cell occur in this layer it is the site of the major processing of the vision image the function of the amacrine cell is responsiveness to motion or direction of the motion in short it detects the direction of motion their horizontal connection causes a sharpening of the edges of the any stimulated field on the retina layer 8 it is ganglionic cell layer it is a single layer of cell containing round cells layer 9 it is the optic nerve it is formed by joining the axons of ganglionic cells and 
the last layer is layer number 10 that is the internal limiting membrane it separates the retina from the vitreous humor it is formed by the glial cell now let us study here say now the differences between the rods and the cords now every say photoreceptor having certain dimensions for example rods is having approximate length about 100 to 200 micrometer and diameter is about 2.5 micron they are cylindrical in shape and longer than cone cells for the cones the length is in between range of 65 to 75 micrometer diameter is say 5 to 8 micron they are conical in shape they are shorter than the rod and the cell the number of the rods is more than the cones it is about say 120 say millions and that of say that is cone it is approximately 8 million per eye now one important thing about say rods they are not found in the fovea but evenly distributed throughout the rest of the eye their ratio to the cones is about 1 is to 20. now what you will find of the cones as i already told you cones are mainly mean for color vision they are red and green sensitive cones cones are highly concentrated in the fovea and say the blue sensitive cones are present near the fovea about say that is rod they are having high sensitivity to light and longer outer segment and more photopigments as compared to the cones now cones are having say lower sensitivity to light they are short they are having shorter outer segment and less photopigments as compared to the say rods the rods are used for night vision pigment is usually bleached in bright so that rods are inoperative in daytime but however the cones are used for daytime vision many rods are linked to the each retinal ganglion cells so that their receptive fields are larger hence relatively having lower acuity cones are having smaller receptive fields especially in the fovea where limit is diameter of one cone approximately that is about a two micrometer the rods do not give any color sensation and cones are responsible for say color sensation the rods contain here that is the photopigment what we call rhodopsin is in the membranous disc inside the rod outer segment quantity of pigment is more than cones cones say have the photopigment for red blue or say that is blue color or they are sensitive to this three types of the colors the pigment is incorporated in the folds of the cones outer segment of the membrane rod contains the pigment what we call the rhodopsin which is in a say membrane as this inside the rod outer segment and quantity of say the pigment is more than cones in the cones these pigments are sensitive to these three types of the color red blue or green and they are inc incorporated in folds of the cone in the outer segment membrane. The rods are sensitive to light rays with wide angle of incidence, including those traversing the periphery of the lens. They respond to the scattering light. Now the cones have greater directional sensitivity. They are less sensitive to light rays traversing the periphery of the lens. The rods are sensitive to light, but here remember that visual acuity is low. In the cones, sensitivity to light is low, but their visual acuity is high. Many rods to one pigment cell and one bipolar cell. This is their distribution. In case of the cone, the one cone is related to one pigment cell and one bipolar cell. Now remember that that is the in the fovea there is the what we call it the fovea centralis where the more maximum accumulation of the cones is present and hence we call it as a say visual sharpness of the eyes say is maximum in this area what we call it the fovea centralis and there is a other part which i have mentioned that is the nuclear uh, macula later then say this finishes here about that is the basic say that is the structure 
of I. Okay. Now I just thank you for watching. Say uh, this lecture patiently. Similarly, I request all of you to subscribe my channel. Just uh, and please give me the feedback for further improvement. Thank you very much.